Bezras Hashem, today's daf is Masechta Baba Kama, daf Tzadik Hay. And we will, uh, we will begin, we will begin Bezras Hashem on daf Tzadik Dalit Omid Beis. I'm just, yeah, yeah Tzadik Dalit Omid Beis. This is where we're starting. About like uh, one, two, three, six lines from the bottom. Tushma. We learned yesterday a very fascinating thing that if uh, I'm going to bring up on Tzadik Dalit Omid Beis, uh, uh, and here we go. We learned that Hagazlonim, professional, you know, professional uh, Ponzi scheme people, okay? El Malvi Beris, let's say a Gazlan. They stole so much money. If you have somebody that stole so much money, so we want to make it easier for them to do tshuva. So, days of Rebbe, there were uh, Gazlonim who spent the whole career stealing from people. And they and they weren't going to do tshuva because they said it's impossible for us to do tshuva. So what they did was they said that they should go through the motions of giving back the item, and the person receiving it should not accept it, not accept it from him. You know, tell him that okay, it's okay, it's okay. And whoever accepts it from them and says, "Oh, thank you for returning the thing that you stole from me ten years ago," ein chachamim Chachamim don't like that. They, they because it make it makes it very difficult for somebody to do tshuva. I'm just going to quote over here so you should know what the story is. There was this great ganef who wanted to do tshuva. His wife said, Reka, you empty one. If you're going to start doing tshuva, you don't even own a, a, a belt. You've been stealing all your life. And this is the problem. The nimna v'leyasa tshuva, he never did tshuva. So, because he said it's impossible, yeah. I, how could I return everything? They said at that moment, that they should go through the motions of returning and saying, "I'm sorry," and I want to give you back your money. But the people who are the who were the victims should not accept it. And now we go to the bottom of Tzadik Dalit Amid Beis. So the Gemara says, "Toshma, come in here." You have uh, shepherds who have been stealing all their lives, or gaboyim, uh, or people in charge of the king to collect taxes. And Muxin is also like that. So these people are known ganovim. So the Bryce says, Chubasim Kasha, it's hard for them to do Chuva, but they have to return the money to the people that they know that they stole from. So we see from there that they they that they're supposed to steal. They're supposed to return the money. Not like uh, the Rebbe said that they shouldn't have to return the money. Uh, answers the Gemara Amru. So the, the, the yeshiva answered this question. It's not a uh, it's not a difficulty. Machzirim, they should the people who want to do tshuva, the ganovim that want to do tshuva, should make <laughs> they make an attempt. They try to, to return it. The, the the people should not accept it from them. So they, they 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 go through the motions of of uh, I really want to return the money I stole from you. Then why do they have to return it? Why do they have to go through the motions? Lots of sidei to show in heaven that they really want to do tshuva, but they just you know it's too difficult this tshuva because they've been stealing all their their lives. So the Gemara says Yehochi amai tshuvas and kasha. Why did the Bryce say tshuva is very difficult? They're not going to lose money. They're going to go to people. Here's your, here is it, and the guy's not going to accept the money back. So it's not such a difficult tshuva. But oi, safer. Look at the end of the brisa. The she'ein makirim, she'ein makirim, which means if they don't know whose money they stole from, they stole from so many different people they don't remember. Yasim em sibar. They should build, let's say, a park with the money. <laughs> They should build like a reservoir where people have water fountain, etc. So the, it means that they're actually going to lose the money. It's not like they're, they're going to be able to keep the money. So again, Rebbe said that, that the Ganav should keep the money that he stole. If he's a professional Ganav and it's difficult to do tshuva. And here the Bryce says they have to return the money. It's not difficult. takana, kan takana. Before the Takana, yes, they had to return the money. And that's what this price is talking about. But after Rebbe said, uh oh, there's too many Ganovim and 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 people are, are not going to do tshuva. So he made the Takana that the victim should not try to get their money back. They should be Moichel the guy. 
Hashda Omar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman said another statement. When the actual item that the guy stole, let's say he stole uh, a necktie, and that's not there anymore, he still owes the money, so then you don't return it. Only then you don't return it, you're not supposed to accept it. Even you can say both prices are talking about after the takana, and both prices are talking about where you know a ghana does not have to return the money that he stole. But like Kasha, and it's not difficult. I this Bryce says they should return the money that they stole. We go to Tzadik Aleph on the Aleph. Khan Bilgizela Kayames. When the actual item that you stole is still around, you stole a piece of jewelry and it's still around, you should return that piece of jewelry. But if you stole something and the, and the actual item you stole is not around, so Chachamim made it very easy for a professional Ganav to do tshuva, and he says he should go through the motions as if he wants to do tshuva, but then the, the victim should not accept the money. Khan b'she'en gezela kayamis, when there's no gezela around, and the actual item that you stole, then you don't have to really return it. it says the Gemara Avna the gezela kayamis, the story of Rebbe was when this guy wanted to do tshuva and, uh, and, and, he's, and he says, I'm going to return everything that I stole. His wife said, if you're going to start that, your even your gartel, the belt that you have on your on your on your suit is not even yours. So so what are you what are you returning for? So and that's how the takana was made. So the, the even when even when the gazela is is kayames, you don't have to return it. And so tomorrow, my Avne, not that he was returning, he stole the garto. The May Avne, it's the value of the garto. That was the question. He wanted to even return the, 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 the belt that he bought in a store from Geneva money on this. So basically, the Gemara just established when the item that you stole is still around, you don't you have to return it. When the item that is he stole is not around, then you don't have to return it. Says the Gemara, whenever the gazela is still around, then you still have to return it. We learned in a, in a Mishnah about a bean. A guy stole a bean. He stole from a lumber yard a bean. The gazela kayamasi. It's it, the, the gazela, it never loses it. it. He stole a bean. What did he do with it? Utnan, we learned in the Mishnah, Al Hamarish, Hagazel, Shabana Babira. If you take a a a, a take a a um, a uh, a beam and you built it into a into a house, you return. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to um, return the beam itself, but he could pay the value of the beam that he stole. to make it easier for the person to do tshuva. But the question is: but since the beam is still around, you should be required to knock the house down and return the beam. So why did we say no? Uh, it's even though the the gazelle is still around, you don't have to return the beam. You can return the money. And says the Gemara, Shani Hashem, it's very different. The Kaven, the Ikap, say the Debira, Shavi Rabbanan Kedalesa. Since there's you're knocking a house down, you're knocking a, a building down. So it, the Rabbanan considered it as if the the beam is not there. And in other words, we look at it. That yes, true, the beam physically, you can see the beam in the building that you built, but since it's a difficult to knock out to to to, dis, to demolish a building to return one piece of wood, so Rabbanan considered it as if it's not a gazela kayamas, and really you shouldn't even have to return money because with in gazela kayamas you don't have to return anything, but since you can still see it, so you should return the money. It's like the in-between game. Again, we just finished something fascinating over here where Chachamin tried to make it so easy for somebody who is a professional Ghana. He stole from the whole town uh, and he wants to do tshuva. If he goes to do tshuva and the item that he stole is not around anymore and he just wants to pay people back from the losses that he, he caused them, the people should not accept the money. They should say, yeah, it's okay. We're Michael, you on that. That was the Kana of Rebbe. It's a fascinating thing. We care about every Jew. The rabbis taught, the guy steals a sheep, ugzaza, and then sheared the wool off the sheep. Para, he gave a, uh, he gave a, he gave, he stole a cow, the old birth. So now what happened was he stole a sheep that it grew here, and then he shaved off the wool. The para, the para, the para. 
um, the para gave uh, gave got pregnant while it was stolen and then gave birth. So now you have the cow that you stole plus the baby, or you have the sheep that you stole plus plus the plus the plus the uh, the plus the shearings plus the wool. So you have to return everything. Shalom Oisiv Vizkizisel Vesvlodasel Div Remeir. Remeir holds Shinoi is not koina. And therefore the cow, the, the child, the, the, the wool, everything has to be returned to the original owner, the person that you stole from. Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Gezer lechayzeres beineha. The item that you stole, you return as is. But not, not the, it seems not the wool and not the, not the baby. You just make an estimation and you pay money. So let's see what the go, what's going on over here. So let's the Gemara is now going to examine each of the Tanoim's opinion. Rameyer had the opinion. You steal a cow, it became pregnant while it was in the hands of the Ganif, and then gave birth. Rameyer says that baby with the with the original cow has to be returned to the original owner. So the Gemara says, my time with the what, is, what is the source reason of Rameo? Either you say, it never left the original owner's possession because Shinui, any change in the animal, still remains the original owner's. That's what Shinui Bim Kaima Aymid. There's no such a thing. Shinui is not Kaina. And therefore, it's the original owner who benefits from the baby that comes out of the cow. Dilma, maybe, but Alma, you'll say Shinui Kaina. Really, the fact that it changed, that something happened to the animal, became pregnant, so therefore that makes it a different animal, and therefore the the child, the baby, should really belong to the ganav. We're, we're punishing the putting a penalty on the ganav, so he shouldn't be able to choite and niskar be a sinner and and now walk away with a profit. So we don't want that to happen. What's the difference? If it went down in value. If you went down in value, so then if Shinoi is not koina, just return the animal. Let's say the animal suddenly got uh, cancer, whatever. It, it lost a lot of weight. So according to the first opinion, if Rame were whole, just return the animal that you stole. But if you called Shinoi is koina, so therefore then the person would have to pay Kishas Gzela. It was a healthy animal when you stole, and therefore pay a healthy animal the value of a healthy animal. Toshba, come in here. Gazel behema beiskina. If a person stole an animal and it got old, oh, avode beiskino or slaves that got old, mishalim kishas gzela. You pay the animal. You pay the animal at the time you stole it. You pay the eved at the time that you stole it. So that's the opinion of that is the opinion of the Tanakama. Meir says, if you steal a slave and it got old, you know you stole it when it was forty and now it's fifty. You can say, you can say, keep your slave back because it's not really stolen because a slave is like stealing land. You can't really steal land. So it really is, remains the original owner. But the animal, since it changed, it got older, it's a different animal than you stole. Kishas Akzela, you, you have to pay the value of the animal at the time that you stole it because because obviously, since it got older, it's a different animal. So it must be Rav Meir Hol Shine Koina. The Ib Sakadaitech. If you want to say Sover Rav Meir Shine Bem Koima Imed. If you want to say that Rav Meir holds Shine, there's Shine is is, is is remains its original owner. Shine is not Koina. I feel a behemanami. So then, with an animal, also Rav Meir should agree. You could say to the own original owner, "Here's your animal back. It's ten years older." El Alav Shmamino must be. Really, Rameir holds Shinu is Kaina. And over here, the over here, the reason why we say Shinu is not Kaina is because in our case, we don't want the, the Goslin, when the animal gave birth, to benefit from it. So therefore, we penalize him to return even the baby back to the Nigzal. Omar, uh, that's what that's what the Gemara wants to say. So Rameir will hold Shinu is Kaina. So the Gemara's answer is back. Not necessarily. There's no real proof for that. Amri, uh, Amri, Chachamim answered, Rameir, Lidivreim, Lerbonin, Kama. Rameir could say, he was not really expressing his own opinion. He was speaking on behalf of the Rabbanan. He would say like this, Lididi, I really hold Shinui, Ein Koina. 
a shinoi it does not make it the, uh, you can't acquire something just because it changed. So therefore, it was never the goslins. It's always the original person you stole from. Even an animal, you can say, but you say that we see shino koina. You always say shino. You rub on and say shino is koina. But still, oideli mias ba avda the from a karkei daimi. Would you agree with me that when you steal a slave, since a slave is has has the characteristics of like stealing real estate, which is not it's not really considered stolen. So therefore, it remains its original owners, and therefore, by just like by an evet, just like by animal, you can say You can say Here's it back, even if you steal a slave and it got older. The karka ain't an exelus. said loy dummy. Not true. Avdi is like stealing a, a watch. When you steal an evet, it's like stealing a movable item, and therefore, it, if there's a shinui in the evet. So then it becomes the possession of the Ganef, and the, the, the Ganef has to pay the, the May Gazela at the time, at the price that it was when he stole it. Okay, so now again, what we're trying to prove, what is the opinion of Rabbi Meir? Does Rabbi Meir hold Shinui is Koina or Shinui is not Koina? So Toshima, come in here. Litzboya loy Odom. A man gave his, uh, uh, let's say, wool. To a dyer, he told him, I want you to dye it red. Utsvoy Shahar, and he dyed it black. Shahar, he gave him instruction to dye it, dye it black. Utsvoy Adam, and he dyed it red. Rameir Oimer, Rameir says, So the guy messed up his wool. Nice and like they made samurai. All you have to give him back is the price of wool that's not, that doesn't have dye in it. The made samurai in. You have to give him the wool, the, the value of the wool, yes. The made samurai, but the price of the wool. With the uh, with now that it's a painted wool, it's probably worth more. You don't have to pay him back that. If you hold shino, he's not koina. So when that guy messed up and started dyeing it another color, so whose benefit is it? It's the it's the person that gave the the wool to the dyer. It's still his wool, and therefore the mate samer shivcha by Now that you have a wool that has a dye in it, it's worth more than just a plain piece of wool. So when you're returning, when you have to pay the guy back for messing up the instructions, you should pay him a dyed piece of wool, the price of a dyed piece of wool, not the, the uh, price of a regular piece of wool. So it must be, the Gemara concludes, whenever a change in the thing item uh, happens, so the one that has it now acquires the item, and by Geneva, the reason why you have to give back the, the the animal that gave birth, you have to give back the not only the animal, but you have to pray for the give him back the Vlad, is because the, the offspring is we're punishing, we're penalizing the Ganif that he shouldn't benefit. He stole an animal and now it gave birth, and you're gonna let him keep the baby animal. No. We don't want you to do that, even though you can say Shino is kind of because the animal underwent the change by, change by giving by becoming pregnant and giving birth. But we don't want the Ganav to benefit from it. Shmamina, that's the proof. The Gemara continues. Ikidi Amre, others say, me We don't have a, a that kind of a question if that's the opinion of Ramea. Rav had the reverse opinion of of of, of Rameir, where clearly Rameir says once you steal an item and it change undergoes a change, it's it's really belongs now to the Ganav, and the Ganav has to pay Kishas Hagzela. So Vada, it's definitely we have no question the Rameir Shinui Kaina. If a change happens in the item, you acquire it. And Rameir always says that we don't want the Ganav to benefit, so we're always penalizing him to return the, the, the profits that he made off this theft. But the question is, when did Rameir punish the Ganav is only if he stole on purpose. But if by accident, somebody by accident bought stolen property, and he benefited from that stolen property by appreciating it. 
does do we punish him as well? Do we penalize him as well? Since it's Bishoigig. Even Bishoigig, Ramea would also penalize the guy since you're you you have in your possessions a stolen uh item. So therefore, if something change underwent the change that will increase the value, you would still have to return that to your, to the original owner. So Gemara says like this: Toshma, come in here. Chamisha goivim min hamuchurarim. There are five people who who are who are owed who are carrying a debt instrument. They owe people money. They 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 they, they the people owe them money. They can collect only from non leaned properties, not from lekuches, not something that was sold. There's no more. They can't mortgage and call back a, a, a property that was sold. That was sold. They could only collect from freestanding land that was in the possession of the person that owes the money. Paris, We're going to discuss this in a minute. So, first of all, we establish, this is the Bryce, right? And now we're going to establish Okay? That this Bryce's author is Rameir. That's what the Gemara is establishing because there's a Rameir is of the opinion that if you've got to write that I want to lean on properties because of this loan, so that then the properties are not lean. You have to write it into the contract. It's not a mistake if it's left out. So basically, what the Gemara established is that this Brisa, the author of the Brisa is Rameir. Now, Ukutani, Paris with Shvach Paris. That Paris and Shvach Paris you can collect from. It means that you have to pay it back. The person who owes you this the the increase in in the Paris, in the in the profits, he has to pay that back. Shvach Paris Hechidami. What's the case? Kigoin. This is the example. Shagozo Sodom Mechavera. Man stole a field from his friend, Umachori Laachar Vihishbich, and he sold it to somebody else. And that other guy put improvements on that field. Now the guy, the person that was that had his field stolen from it, he's collected back his field. So he took it from the person. He took back his field from the person that's that bought it. Now that person that bought it goes back to the Ghanim and says, "Give me my money back." Plus, I want you to give me money back for the improvements that I did on the property. Shu Gaiva, when he collects, when the when the guy that the purchaser wants to collect the Ghana from the Ghanif, the field. Goiva, we go to Ahmed Bey's. Goiva is an karen min achos The original item that 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 he paid for, the principal that he paid for that stolen property, he could collect from achos mishubadim. That's a shavach, but the the increased value that he invested into the property that he purchased, that he collects from the gazim min achos minecharim from freestanding property. He can't go into his lien property. He can't put a lien on any property. So what does it mean? The Asa Bal Arav Shakal Arav Shifke. It means the person that purchased the, the land is coming to take the land and its subsequent improvements. My love, the, aren't we talking about Ba'amaritz? We're dealing here with a, a guy who didn't know it was stolen, or he thought that when you when 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 you when land is stolen and you buy it, you can kick it. it. The Layod the Kak and Exalus and Exalus. He doesn't know about land if it's stolen or not stolen. All he knows is that maybe. Even if it is stolen, it becomes me, it becomes mine, the purchaser. So he made a whole mistake by purchasing this piece of land. And nevertheless, we punish the The guy that purchased it could collect from the Ganif and say, listen, you sold me a stolen piece of land. So pay me back the land that I purchased from you, which was stolen, and also my improvements. So shmami no b'shoigig nami kanes. So we so therefore we see that even if there was an ax, there was a mistake that somebody invested into the property, uh, still the ganav is liable and has to has to take responsibility for those shvachim from those improvements. So that's what the gemara wants to say. The gemara says amri no loy not so belakeach tamechachem biyada. It's talking about the person who purchased it is a smart talmud chacham. And he knows, he knows that that uh, that that uh, this was stolen. That if you if if it's stolen, 
then the Ganef is going to have to pay back his improvements. So it's not really a good proof. But let's see over here, and we're going to have a fantastic proof. Toshma. A guy gives a piece of wool to a dyer. He gave him instructions to dye it red. He dyed it black. Black, he dyed it red. So the, the, the dyer messed up. A mayor, I a mayor says, Noisen Lloyd to make samurai. The guy has to pay the, the price of the wool. But that's it. He pays the guy back. Here's, here's the, the value of wool undyed. The mate samurai in, he pays the value of the wool undyed, the mate samurai vishiv khalai, but he doesn't have to pay back the value of a piece of wool with paint on it. The Isal Kadaita Bashig Namikan is if the if the if Rameir always said that Shoigig also gets penalized. So therefore, if the guy made a mistake and painted the guy's wool the wrong color, so when he wants to pay him back, he should pay him back. A wool, a painted, the value of a wool with its with its with its improvements. The Mei Shamrai Vishiv Khoi Mbayla Mei Sablai. You should pay back the price of the wool with its improvements. That's what he should pay back. Elav Shpamina, from here you see, B'Mezid Konis B'Shoi Gig Lai Konis. Only B'Mezid, you're punished. But not b'shoigig. B'shoigig, he didn't penalize you, and therefore you don't have to pay back the shvach. Okay, but that was just an ikad the amri. So that is the the gemara's first uh, tana. That was Rab Meir. Now the gemara just for another minute, and we'll stop. Rab Meir, Rab Yehuda Oima, Rab Yehuda says, Gezela Chizeres Be'Enah. Interesting. Rab Yehuda says like this. Uh, uh, Rabbi Yehuda says that if an animal, you steal an animal and it became pregnant, you have to give the whole pregnant animal back to the person you stole from. But only if the animal is uh, is pregnant. But let's say the animal gave birth, then all you give you pay is the value of an animal that's not pregnant. So that's right. Rabbi Yehuda says, Gizela, the thing, item that you stole, now gets returned the way it is. Rab Shimon, I met. Rab Shimon says, "Ryan Isaac Kihili he Shuma Esloi Bekasef." We you have to pay the value of what you stole. It's not clear of what Rab Shimon is trying to say. My Benayu, I'm Rab Zvid. B'Shevach Shal Begazela Kami Palgi. Rab Yehuda Sava the Nigzel Hava. Rab Shimon Sava the Gazel Hava. Beautiful. Rabbi Shimon, and this is where we'll stop. Rab Shimon holds that if an animal became pregnant. Uh, while after it was stolen, man stole an animal and it became pregnant. Who who's who's who who benefits from that pregnancy animal? Um, Shimon says it belongs to the Ganif. and therefore Shinoi is kind of all the way. Even a light Shinoi that the animal is now a little heavier because it's pregnant, and therefore all all the Ganif has to do is write a check to the to the person he stole for an unpregnated animal. Rabbi Huda says no. If it's still the original animal and it did not get birth, and this is the improvements that's connected to the item that you stole, it's still it's still considered a pregnant. It's still the animal that you stole, but it's just a little heavier. So there, he holds that this pregnancy belongs to the nigzal. So you have to return the original animal to the nigzal. Okay, we're going to stop right over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Just to finish off this sugya, Rapapa Amar Rapapa said that both the Kuli Alma, everybody agrees, Shavach Shal Gabe the improvements that's on the item that you stole, the Gazlan Hava, that belongs to the Gazlan. So if the item became pregnant, it really belongs to the person that you stole from. The Hacha, so what's the argument? They're arguing whether the the, the Gazlan uh, the, or the Nigzal gets. Uh, the whole thing, half, a third, or a quarter. Rabbi Yehuda, Sava, Rabbi Yehuda says, Shavach Shabagabe, Gzela, Kuli, the Gazan Hava. If the animal became pregnant, let's say, it all belongs to the Gazan. 100%, it belongs to the Gazan, and that's it. Rabbi Shimon, Sava, Rabbi Shimon says, not so fast. If the animal became pregnant, Lamechsel Shish Levi, Yehudashakal Gazan. Only he takes only the value of half, a third, or a quarter. That's what the Gazan takes. But the other, other part of it, the other ha uh, half or the other quarter, other three quarters, belongs to the Nigzal. And we can view it as if you hired the Gazlan to get the animal pregnant, which really, it remains uh, the profits of that pregnancy still will benefit the Nigzal. So that is uh, the way Rapapa learned. Tanan, we learned to the Mishnah. 
If you stole a cow and it became pregnant and it gave birth. Let's say you, you stole a sheep and then it grew wool and you shared it. You pay the, the value of the sheep at the time that you stole uh, or the cow at the time that you stole. So let's observe this. You stole a cow, then it became pregnant by the goslin and then it gave birth. According to Rabbi Meir, by the way, you have to give the child with the cow back to the to the to the nigzal. But but let's see what it says here. Here it says, pay the value of a cow at the time that you stole it. Yolda ain only if it gave birth, then you pay it. Lo yolda, but if it did not give birth, if it was still pregnant, hadrabin, and then you have to return the cow back to the nigzal. Bishlam Who that the 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 benefit that's on the gzale itself belongs to the nigzal. So you could say that the author of this price is Rabbi Huda. Harmani, Rabbi Yehuda, he, that the author of this Bryce, of this Mishnah is, I'm sorry, this Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda. El Rapap, Adam, the Gazlan, Haba, the Brahman says, no, that always belongs to the Gazlan. Harmani, who could who could this Bryce be? Loy Rabbi Yehuda, Loy Rabbi Shimon. Rapap said, everybody, Shabach, Shagabi, Agzela, belongs to the Gazlan. And here it says it belongs to the Ningzal. So who would be the author of this Mishnah? Malach Rapap, Rapap says, who had the Nafilad, Loy Yolden, Nami, Kishas, Gazela, Huda, Mishalan. Really, if it even give birth, you would still pay the value of a cow at the time that you stole it. You don't the the the, the fact that the cow became pregnant, even before it gave birth, still belongs to the goslin, right? Why did the Bryce's the Mishnah say that only if it gave birth, it uh, it belongs to the goslin? Why even before it gave birth, it belongs to the goslin? I didn't have Rasha Yolda since the beginning of the Mishnah talks about it gave birth. It's not mean safe in Yolda. That's why the end of the Mishnah talks about a situation where it gave birth. But who would then, this part, the Yolda, according to Rab, Rab's vid, is as if uh, as if it didn't, uh, it, it's not necessarily uh, th that's what causes that you pay Shasak Zela. The, the fact that it got pregnant, that's enough to pay Kshas Gezela. Tanya Kavosa Rapapa, we learned the Bryce exactly what Rapapa opinion of Rab Shimon. Abhuda says, Shevach Shava Gabi Gzela belongs to the Gazlin, 100%. Shimon Oymim Shimon says, no, the Gazlin and the Nigzal split it. The Gazlin has to view it as if he is being paid to get this animal pregnant, but some of the profits of the pregnancy of the animal belongs to the Nigzel, so either you'll get half, a third, or a quarter. Okay, we'll stop over here.